Good morning. Welcome or welcome back to Bookie Monsters. My name is PK. It is Thursday, January the 25th. We are almost done with January. Isn't that crazy? We are here to uh, look at the new releases that are being set into the wild this week. And on Thursdays, we look at fantasy and science fiction. Because we read lots of different genres and lots of different books. And maybe if you don't read those uh, genres, maybe something here will make uh, you check them out a little bit more. You never know. Good morning, Annalise. Happy Thursday, all. Happy Thursday. Hope you guys had a good night. Hi, Kim. Hi, all. I don't read science fiction, but since I'm awake, I thought I'd stop in. <laughs> I appreciate that. Hi, Kim. How are you doing? Hi, Deborah. Good morning. Hi, Anita. Hi, everyone. Hello. Welcome. Uh, let's see. Quick announcements. Uh, there are sprints tonight at 6.05 Mountain Time, 8.05 Eastern. They'll go for two and a half hours. The next sprints after that will be on Saturday afternoon at 1 p.m. Mountain Time, 3 p.m. Eastern. Those will go for five hours. And then tomorrow's morning show will be the end of month last uh, episode for the midwinter hiss mist readathon that I was sponsoring this month. And we'll take a look at some more options. Okay. Yay and yay. All right. Let us jump in. Let me get rid of this banner. All right. Into the Sunken City by Dinesh Thiru. Thiru. A unique twist on Treasure Island. A magnetic second chance romance in a thrilling heist where the reward is great but the risks are even greater. In the slowly sinking city of Coconino, Arizona, the days are long, the money is tight, and the rain never stops. For Jin Haldar, this life is nothing new. Ever since her father died in a diving accident, she's barely made ends meet for her and her younger sister, Thera. Enter Billy, a drifter who offers Jin and Thera the score of a lifetime, a massive stash of gold hidden in the sunken ruins of Las Vegas. Jin knows it's too dangerous. She stopped diving after her father's accident. But when her sister decades... When her sister decides to go, bleh, Jin left with only one choice, to go with her. A ragtag crew is assembled, including Jin's annoyingly hot ex-boyfriend. From there, a high-stakes heist ensues that's beyond even Jin's wildest fears. Crumbling ruins, sea beasts, corsairs, and a mysterious figure named Zhao Silva are all in wait, all lie in wait. To survive, Jin will have to do what she promised herself she'd never do again. Dive. That sounds adventurous. Kinning by Nisi Shawl, second in Everfair. The stunning alternate history where bark cloth airships soar through the sky, varied peoples build a new society together, and colonies claim their freedom from imperial imperialist tyrants. The Great War is over. Everfair has found peace within its borders, but our heroes' stories are far from done. Tink and his sister Bilung are traveling the world via air canoe, spreading the spores of a mysterious empathy-generating fungus. Through these spores, they seek to build bonds between people and help spread revolutionary sentiments of socialism and equality, the very ideals that led to Everfair's founding. Excuse me? Meanwhile, Everfair's Princess Mwadi and Prince Ilunga return home from a sojourn in Egypt to vie for their country's rule following the abdication of their father, King Mwenda. But their mother, Queen Josina, manipulates them both from behind the scenes, while also pitting Europe's influenza-weakened political powers against one another as these countries fight to regain control of the rebellious colonies. Will Everfair continue to serve as a symbol of hope, freedom, and equality to anti-colonial movements around the world, or will it wall to forces inside and out hello yeah this is written by a millennial gen z socialism has never ever ever succeeded and the planetary political commentary 
Uh, the Summer Queen by Rochelle Hassan, second in the Buried and Bound trilogy. Uh, into the twisted and irresistible world of the fair folk. As a new coven, Aziza, Leo, and Tristan faced evil and triumphed. All that's left is to put their lives back together, a process complicated by the fallout from painful secrets, the emotional and physical scars they now carry, and the mysteries that still haunt them. But with the approach of the solstice comes the arrival of a stra of strange new visitors to Blackthorn, the Summer Court, a nomadic community of fair folk from deep in Elfame. They've journeyed to the border between the human world and fairyland, far from their usual caravan route, to take back something that belongs to them, something Leo's not willing to lose. Refusing to give up without a fight, he makes a risky deal with the Summer Court's princess and regent. The challenge she proposes sends Kevin Blackthorn into the farthest, wildest reaches of Elfame. But when you play games with the fair folk, even winning has a cost. Not my cuppa either. Good morning, Mary. Excited today. My daughter flies in from Florida for a short visit. Oh, wonderful. My great grandson's third birthday is Saturday. Fun times ahead. Oh, that's going to be so fabulous. Exactly. Happy for you. Anita, I've started a new writer to me. His name is Sam Bourne in the same line as Dan Brown, action thriller. Aren't those fun? Those are fun. The Tale of Eagle Friend, the complete series. 1,081 pages. Good for you. Nice cover. So these came out in 2016. They're putting them all together. We'll just read the first chapter here. In a land of eagle-riding knights, bloodthirsty beasts, and a ruthless tyrant, young Morlin retreats from thousands of snapping jaws with the golden, with the stolen gold shard in his grasp. Its power to bestow strength and invisibility is just a panicked whisper away, and he'd feel naked without it while he fights the sinister forces that follow him at every turn. Baybound by Sarah L. Arifi. Interesting cover. Two elven sisters become imprisoned in the intoxicating world of the Fae, where danger and love lie in wait. That sounds very much like a lot of that kind of fantasy, but we'll see what this one's about. Yurin was born on the battlefield, has lived on the battlefield, and one day she knows she'll die on the battlefield. As a warrior in the elven army, Yurin has known nothing but violence her whole life. Her sister, Lettel, is trying to make a living as a diviner, seeking prophecies of a better future. When a fatal mistake leads to Yurin's exile from the elven lands, both sisters are forced into the terrifying wilderness beyond their borders. There, they encounter the impossible, the Fey Court. The Fey haven't been seen for a millennium, but now Yurin and Lettel are thrust into their seductive world, torn among their loyalties to each other, their elven homeland, and their hearts. This is why fantasy gets a bad name. Yes. Yep, I wish he would write more. All right. Uh, Peacemaker, number 15, by Renee Jager, Jagger, and Michelle, Michael Anderley. How do you navigate through cascading challenges when every wave might be a tempest? Julie and her allies, including Taylor and Eglantine, plunge into the abyss of the deep, liberating dragons from Mordred's malevolent clutches. But victory is fleeting. Can they decipher Mordred's ominous, elusive schemes before it's too late? In the halls of Avalon, a peace summit meant to unify paranormals against looming threats teeters on the brink of collapse amid anti-war protests. Julie grappling with the mysteries of the perilous void knife and staving off attacks from the enigmatic wild hunt finds herself adrift amidst a sea of crises. Can she anchor her leadership and find a way to steer the alliance between the dark tide Mordred is unleashing? And she has wings. For whatever reason. Now there's a big name in sci-fi. Seth Dickinson. Exordia. 
Anna, I came to Earth tracking a very old story, a story that goes back to the dawn of time. It's very unlikely that you'll die right now. It wouldn't be narratively complete. Anna Sanjari, refugee survivor of genocide, disaffected office worker, has a close encounter that reveals universe-threatening stakes. Enter Srin, a many-headed serpent alien, I'm out, uh, who is on the run from her own past. Srin and Anna are inexorably dangerously drawn to each other, and their contact reveals universe-threatening stakes. While humanity reels from disaster, Anna must join a small team of civilian soldiers and scientists to investigate a mysterious broadcast, an unknowable horror. If they can manage to face their own demons, they just might save the world. Plus the cover has an eyeball. Double out. <laughs> and he's enjoying the first book so far. Good. No snakes, thank you. Nope. Shamara Star. I like... I'm old fashioned. I like in fantasy, I like the quest of companions and in sci-fi, I like humans in space. Just humans. I don't like aliens, which is strange for sci-fi, but I want the human experience in space. Shamara Star by Glenn Stewart, 14th in the Starship Mages series. I've heard of this one, I've just not read it. History holds many secrets. The frontier holds many shadows. One ship may damn all mankind. One ship may save them. In a bold and brazen act of treachery, the Royal Martian Navy Expl Exploratory Cruiser Rose was stolen and is now in the hands of the conspiracy group known as Nemesis. You know, if you're a conspiracy group and you want to stay under the radar, don't call yourself Nemesis. Guilty of a thousand crimes, Nemesis and its leader, Kent Riley, are determined to find proof of the alien threat they have secretly been preparing humanity to face. Set in pursuit by set in pursuit by the Mage Queen of Mars herself, Mage Captain Rosalind Chambers commands Rose's sister ship, Thorn, in a chase that brings her to the far reaches of the galaxy. Her orders are clear, bringing Nemesis to justice and, if at all possible, prevent, prevent them from waking a sleeping beast. Riley will find the enemy at, at any cost. Chambers will stop him. Among lost worlds and ancient crimes, the secrets of the past will seek may mean nothing or everything. If you're looking to read science fiction or fantasy, you cannot go wrong with Elizabeth Moon or Lois McMaster Bujold. Just saying. A Curse So Dark and Twisted, A Cursed Crow. By Lan Garrett. Book five in the Cursed Crow series. The hunt has that's an interesting cover. The hunt has only just begun. A cry sounds over Elfame. Elfame again? A silent hunt has begun. Dread fills the realms. The weak will succumb. The chase has started. Crows will become. The gate is where it starts. A new enemy has come. What is this written by AI? In Elfheim, where every crow faces slavery and certain death at the hands of Fae, Perdita Darkmoor is the first to survive, gain her freedom, and wage wars to protect her home. With the gate destroyed, Perdita returns to the mortal realm to help rebuild. But returning to Whitwick Gates was not the warm welcome she had hoped for, leaving her balancing perilously between mortals and Fae. When her enemies come for her family, Perdita is forced to navigate a world she's still learning and a throne she's never sat upon before her family is put to death. Caught between two worlds, Purdy is tasked with fighting against life-altering decisions, rescuing her family, and saving her people. All right. Let me double-check this one real quick. Yeah, no. Elves seem to be big right now. I have no slash shorts about finding and seeing elves. Yep, very elf, very fey. I don't get sci fi anymore. I know. It's been invaded. If you go to tor.com, it's been invaded by activism and it's a tragedy. I prefer the old sci fi like Asimov and Arthur C. Clarke. Yep, yep, yep. 
Yeah. Well, and like a lot of things, activism has taken over and made horrible a lot of things. We're just doing a quick scan here. Because that may be it. Yeah, I don't do horror. And in fact, um, in uh, February, you know, like for January, a lot of historical mystery, I'm not doing an unofficial readathon, but my goal in February is to read a lot of fantasy that I have stacked up. I'm not uh, guaranteeing I'm going to finish them all. Oh yeah, let's check out these two. We've got some time. Let's see, now, Ellie Mod Modisit is a very, very big name in fantasy, but is this a re-release or is it new? Yeah, so it looks like it's new. We'll look at it. From the Forest, 23rd in the Saga of the Recluse. I have not read any of those. It is supposed to be epic fantasy. Oh my goodness. Aleikul? Al Aleikul? Who will one day be known by many names. That one's enough not all of them flattering, has to climb the ranks of Sidor's mirror lancers, fighting against unforeseen weapons and ancient technology. A, however, has secrets of his own to protect, his ties to the great forest and his Megas abilities. He must silently pretend to be a conventional soldier favored by fate until that very same fate forces him to choose. Which is not saying a whole lot about this. For 452 pages, but there you go. You want an epic fantasy? We get epic fantasy, I guess. Mine. Okay. By J.R. Ward, another big name, I think mostly in paranormal stuffy. Uh, this is third in the lair of the woven. Let me double check the date, but I'm pretty sure. Oh, we get an excerpt. That's nice arms, though. Let's check those out. Yeah, okay. In this finale, Lydia and Daniel are bracing themselves for his inevitable decline, but first they must go on a rescue mission that will put both their lives in danger. Uh, but for 500 pages, that's it. But I also will not read this. I don't get into werewolves. I think that's what that's. Vampires, werewolves, aliens... Eyeballs, snakes. <laughs> I'm starting to accept dragons. Again, we're just going to scan here for any that we might have potential to look at. Oh, really missing. Let's check the hardcover version. Yeah, came out in July. Never mind. Nineteen ninety one.
Um, that may be it. Yeah, not really interested in paranormal. The thing in the snow. Okay, bleh. And, oh, nothing can be good if it has the word womb in the title. We'll look at it. Fine. Womb City by Tlotlo Samase. Uh, but they're calling it a horror mon novel. So, no. Oh, saved by the bell. Woof. I don't do horror. All right. Well, that is it for today. Just closing down some tabs here. Okay, okay, okay. Oh, commercial. Stop it. Let's see. Yep. Yep. Oh, gosh. Um, how many hours a day do I read? On a good day, a couple. Because I read a little bit at lunch if I'm able to after I walk Keo, um, and then some in the evening. But those are good days. Some days I don't read a whole lot of pages. Please hit the like button. Thank you very much, Annalise. If you start that series, you have to you have a pile to go through. For you. If you read an order, I'm very much uh, mostly an order person, but there are rebels out there, people who go rogue and read out of order, not knowing what's going on before. Real for the day. Ah, oh, yes, the arms. I like psych psychological thrillers. Any suggestions? Um, let me get back to you. I'm going to be thinking about that. Uh, they stayed up late to think of that title. Yeah. I think I may go back to sleep for a while. It's supposed to rain all day. Oh, that is excellent sleeping weather. Rainy and overcast here too, Kim, but very warm. Crazy weather for sure. Worm here to read outside later under my carport. Very nice. Yeah, we are in the 40s, heading towards 50s for the next few days, which is very, very nice. Well, thank you guys so much for hanging out and checking out. And hopefully, I wasn't really inspired by anything here today, but uh, you never know. You got That's why you got to look. Because if you don't know what's out there, you can't find new things to read. So you check things out. All righty. Again, uh, we do have uh, sprints tonight at 6.05 Mountain Time, 8.05 Eastern. If things go well, I sometimes start earlier. Just to kind of depends on traffic getting home um, and so forth. So uh, we do have that. They'll go for two and a half hours tonight. 64, 75 later. Nice. Um, I'll have what she's having. <laughs> Um, and then the next sprints are on Saturday afternoon. Tomorrow we'll be looking at the last uh, concentrated look at historical mysteries. And uh, exactly. No, you have to spend time with your daughter. Uh, thank you very much. All right. Well, I hope you have a good Thursday. I hope you're reading good books. If you're not reading something you're enjoying, it's okay to put it on pause. It's okay to set it down. Reading is enjoyable. Doesn't mean it's a bad book. Doesn't mean it's a bad author. It's just not the right time for the two of you to come together. Um, and as the banner says here, don't be a bookworm, be a bookie monster. Om nom nom. Have a good day. God bless. <laughs>